listening to it teaching this morning on the radio it doesn't really matter who it's a it's a christian teacher and they all the mainstream of them anyway all have the same basic message with different variables of balance between law and grace and he was teaching about how jesus said you have heard that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies and i say you shall love your enemies and and all this and and then he, he talks about the part in luke where it leads up to the the good samaritan story because he, he says well then the man tries to justify himself because he wants to find out who his neighbor is but jesus is ah, ah, ah. he's gonna catch him and show him that everyone's your neighbor especially those you despise because he obviously he was talking to jews and they did not like the samaritans so it, it's amazing to me that that mankind in the religious sense especially israel I'll just say Israel, not mankind. Although even secular humans do this, but Israel has always been told to live this way because God commands it. God commanded you, love thy neighbor as thyself. Nothing new there. Jesus comes along, but then he, he says, well, then everyone's your neighbor, even the people you hate, and you got to love them. So it failed all those eons thousands of years and man could not love his neighbor even as he chose to see it even it was just someone he he would like to love he couldn't do it so now jesus comes along and elevates the command and says oh no it's everyone especially the people especially the people you hate so modern day christianity takes that and says see see we failed forever and now we have this new command not just the people it's easier or at least in a close enough proximity where you might be able to love them but now we gotta love everyone including the people we hate and because it's a command we're just gonna do it is that it and that's amazing to me because when i see what god has really done and compare it to what religion tells us we must do. Well, it's actually religion is telling us to do what God has done. That's what religion tells us to do. Religion tells us to do not only what God has done, but what only God can do. Under duress of command. Or else. Because you know you don't love your neighbor like you're supposed to. Now get in there and love them. What is so different about that? What is, how is that any different than the old system? It's just, now we have this new understanding. Oh, now I understand. Okay, I just, I just didn't understand the previous command enough. Oh, oh, I see. Love my neighbor. Hate my enemy. Now it's love everyone, especially my enemy. Okay, okay, got it. Now, all right, good. And that's how religion is taught. Now just go ahead and, and go execute that. Just go do that because apparently they didn't have the command. Well, no, they did have the command and they failed. Or they convinced themselves that they succeeded and that's why they so could so thoroughly hate their enemy. No, it doesn't matter because they hated their friends and family too. They had contempt for them because, because that's the crazy thing about it is once you have a command to love someone, even someone you otherwise would love becomes even more difficult to love because you know you're supposed to. And when they aggravate you, you will have contempt for them. That's what that causes because you're supposed to be loving them right now and you're not. And so it goes back to the same thing we always talk about here in this channel is that either you, if you're pride-filled and dishonest, you will convince yourself that you do love them or if you're honest, you'll see, wow, I really don't love them and I'm a failure. And But you still can't help but have that contempt for them, and, and especially for yourself. Whereas what he was teaching by maximizing the law, by really showing us the full intent of the law, which was to, to bring us to his mercy and his grace. He, he was teaching us 
the impossibility of the law. I know I say this sentence, I already said it here, but it just amazes me because they would convince themselves, oh, God said it, therefore I will do it. Don't eat from that tree. Okay, no problem. The precedent was set. We can't do anything, he tells us. So why don't we consider that the possibility that maybe, just maybe, since he knows us pretty good, maybe that's not what he's looking for. Maybe he's not looking for that perfect obedience or that best we can. Oh, yeah, he sets out the impossible standard, and we achieve it by doing the best that we can. And who sets that standard? It still comes back to every man deciding on his own how good he sets it because you can't, you certainly can't set it for me. It all just becomes this big subjective thing. But if the standard is his perfect love and receiving it as opposed to giving that love and perfection in order to get it, then it starts to make sense. And I've done it, or at least I've done it from the standpoint of the view of knowing I was a complete and utter failure because I knew I didn't love everyone. And even the people I loved, sometimes they got on my nerves. And all I can think of is, wow, I'm a miserable, hopeless failure because now this person is aggravating me. I, that's not love. That's not Jesus. That's not being a Christian. I'm a lousy Christian. So, like I say, the, the thing that amazes me is they somehow say, no, you can do that. You can do that. Because Jesus said, and all you got to do is do what Jesus said. It's real simple. It's right there. Love your enemy and those who hate you, those who wound you, those who deeply scar you and hurt you in a way that you will never be the same. Just love them. Just love them. That one that molested you or, or beat your mother or fired you when you were pleading them not to fire you. Because you would lose your home or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, I just love him. Why? Because Jesus said so. How? Oh, the Holy Spirit. Well, to a certain extent, that's true. But not by that. Not by through the command. Not the way they teach. The Holy Spirit, which is Jesus himself, teaches your heart how to love people. When you receive that love, once you know that you are loved and accepted perfectly even if you never love them, even if you could never possibly get your mind around ever forgiving them or loving them, he's still loving you because he's the perfect one in this in this relationship. And that's the mix-up is that somehow they say we got to attain this perfection and it's just backwards and it's totally missing the message the Lord was teaching. But he knew what he was doing. He knows how stubborn we are. Just go back to the first man and woman. They disobeyed right from the get-go. They were formed by the very hand of God. Both of them. Both of them. The man and the woman. He took the rib from the, the man and he formed the woman. And they both disobeyed. They both rebelled. So I would say obedience, although it is better than sacrifice in the old covenant, it has nothing to do with the new covenant other than the obedience of believing and trusting that there is only one who can or ever has obeyed, and that is the Lord himself, the man God became, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, they're brave. <laughs> half of them went and half of them didn't.